So we're exploring this idea yesterday with the new version of Descent coming out and how following what seems to be a trend for new Fantasy Flight game releases is it's an app first and a board game second. It's an app that controls the AI and the layout of the dungeon and the scenario, and you move the pieces and interact with a physical gaming board. But it is this interesting hybrid of digital versus analog. And and more and more with Fantasy Flight, they're moving to the digital supported by analog. Now, this is an interesting concept because one wants to innovate, and Fantasy Flight has taken a number of uh, course changes over the years, but they've always innovated. I have to give them that. You know, a perfect example was Runebound 2nd Edition, which I love and is in my collection. When they went from 2nd to 3rd, combat for Runebound was uh, previously D10, and you added abilities and modifiers to beat a certain number, success or failure. They changed it to casting these runes. Rune bound and runes are important in Terranoth, if you know the lore. So they, they created these, these round cardboard runes. And you add to them, meaning your character starts with the base ability of runes. But as you find or buy magic items, you, you get a little token with the magic sword on it that adds some more abilities. You take these runes up, you mix them up, you cast them out, and then you interpret them. Is a little clunky. Yeah. Is it kind of an interesting narrative where you have to resolve and, and think about things? It's not as efficient as streamlined dice. Yeah. But it sure innovates. It's It was an interesting, bold innovation. So with that, I think they jumped on with the apps. You know, we saw that with the Lord of the Rings. And in pushing that out, we, we saw that with Mansions of Madness. But that, that was kind of just to streamline things. I think this is the way they're going to distinguish themselves in the market. And it makes sense as more and more board games come online and more publishers and more choices, more things become popular. It's it's good to be known for it. And the product so far seems very well implemented and very, very interesting. So with that, you know, of course, the question is, is this something you want to buy? Is this something you want to purchase? And, uh, the example that I gave, this was talking back and forth with um, a friend. They've got those chess sets now where the chess pieces move themselves. You dial into the internet, you plug into the internet, you're playing someone and it moves the pieces or the machine plays itself. We've come a long way with the from the pegboard move push down or the magnetic sensors. The chess moves itself. Well, chess is an analog game where you and I move back and forth. So isn't that kind of like a Fantasy Flight app where you are moving the physical pieces, the chess pieces, but the other player, the virtual player or the computer moves the pieces for you? Um, Another example, when I I play chess, I find even with my chess studies and playing against other people virtual, visually, I've never been able to effectively navigate a 2D chessboard. Did the whole chess wallet thing for a long time, but just, I have to admit, however the heck my mind is wired, I need to see 3D. So when I'm playing and solving chess problems, I map it out on my chessboard. When I'm playing against a computer or online with other opponents, I'm on the phone or I'm on the computer, but I have a physical chessboard next to me. I need to see those 3D pieces. So I'm used to moving for myself then when they move on the 2D app, I, I move the chess pieces. It just helps me to see um, the game. And that's just, just where I am. I've tried to work on it for years. It's how my mind is, is wired. I accept it at this point. But it, it really tanks my rating if I don't have that 3D board. So that's kind of like Fantasy Flight, right? That's kind of like Descent and these other games. Well, if I don't have a problem with chess, how do I have an issue possibly with Fantasy Flight? It's not so much the fact that the app isn't good, and maybe this is a personal hang-up. I like to think in my collection, I find a title I love. I want to play and keep it for years. My Descent 2nd Edition, I still play. I think I got that 2008 or 2009. It's still playable. If something is app-based, I'm not so much concerned that it'll become crippleware or, or eventually at some point it'll stop being produced and the app will go dormant. That, that'll that happen. Every game goes out of rotation. But 
keeping that iPhone running or that iPad running, and if we lose the app and you can't play at all, how does that deal with the longevity of the game? The other thing that that seems to be not many people talking about is, I was going to say third-party support, fan support. A lot of games, if I just look at RuneBound, um, the passion of the RuneBound community, the passion of the Descent 2nd Edition community, the passion of Blackstone Fortress, these are board gaming systems that the fans have created a tremendous amount of content to play these games, both when they were active, you know, in the case of RuneBound 2nd Edition, but even it being dormant, all these years later, it's still there, new content's being created. It's nice to know that the game can live on, or if you're going to create your own fan content, that it's possible that way to do it. An app locks that all completely out. I guess you could reverse engineer it, and someone could come up with the rules based on on how it operates. I mean, that's always a possibility, but from the perspective of quests and playability and resolving, you're locked in to that app. So I wonder... It, it, this idea is, is relatively new and evolving out. I wonder how that will affect the fan content community 2, 3, 5, or in the case of some titles, even 10 years out or you know, 12, 15 years out. Or is that, is that asking too much? I mean, I guess that depends uh, your perspective on the board gaming hobby. Is it okay to play it for a while, then move on, trade it? Or are there titles that you want to keep and have in your collection? So... In exploring that, I I understood the chess analogy, but I'd like to have old school. Now, the best of all worlds, and now Descent, second edition, I was going to say third, even though it's not really third, we're calling it third. What Descent second edition did was roll out everything perfectly. And I understand that they had, what, 13 years, 15 years? I think 13, 10, 13, 15, somewhere around there. Of, of this game in development. When it was first released, it was the Overlord model based on Descent First Edition. One versus many. Someone's the Overlord, you have a bunch of players, and you're actively going head-to-head in the gaming session. Then they released the cooperative card base where it creates a random dungeon crawler and you fight a dragon at the end. So now you had two ways, full ways, fully developed ways to play the game. Uh, This is also what kept the longevity going, where you could now say, look, we're tired of this overlord thing. Let's let's work as a co-op, you know, get that kind of zombie side feel to it where it's one against the cards, multiples against the cards. And then, of course, the app came out where you could play in the campaign. It generated random stuff. It pulled in different miniatures. I have that. I used it. It worked very well. It still works very well. It's been amazing to send second edition to have all of those options. I can dip in, I can play whatever I'm feeling, and I'm not linked to anyone. That makes me want to go out and buy a lot more content. So I I wonder if, I thought they might have done this with, um, with Lord of the Rings, but perhaps, you know, with Middle Earth, but perhaps just the way it was developed, they didn't want to put the resources into it, or maybe there's some licensing stuff. I was kind of hoping that they'd have the app based and then later release like a source book to let you go back and play it without the app. With the new Descent, that I would love something like that. Where if, yes, you know what? Support the app. Drive the app. Sell me my DLC content that I'm just going to download. And as I add pieces, you know, do all that. Make that the primary focus. But then maybe have a release where if you wanted to play random dungeons and not use the app or a campaign book not using the app, that that I would really like to see. And that would be a game changer for me. So I understand the shift to distinguish and support app-based play only. And maybe it's just going to be a unique fantasy flight thing. Maybe it's going to move on to, to other things and you're going to see other companies bringing this on board. But the ideal world for me, give us all three. You know, give us both online and offline play. And from there, I think that covers the best of all worlds, both in terms of longevity and pulling in players.